crazy the current a lot tonight. We see the sausage curves on the right here. We'll just go past them in a minute. Yeah. If the Formula One car hits these sausage curves just here on our right, mm -hmm. coming up to them, that will destroy the, the chassis. So they have to miss that. They have to run out wide. But they have to miss that, otherwise uh, it's, it's at least to a lot of damage. And that's exactly why we do track walks, isn't it, Reedy? So the Sorry. drivers don't really like doing track walks, but you, the engineers and the driver trainers make us do it because it is important to see how those curves are when you see them up close stationary. Because when you're doing 300 k an hour, it's very difficult to see, to see the severity of the sawtooth. You look back here, you look at how steep some of those sawtooths are on those curves. You don't see that on TV. Again, onto this corner on the inside here, you've got Maybe you look at this and you think, maybe I could use two. But then you notice this guy here, the sausage curve, which prevents you from using it. So it's all of these little bits and pieces of details, ladies and gentlemen, that really go into making a perfect lap, especially in a Formula One car. Oh, that's so, so true. And sometimes you can be Mr. Brave on the entry, but you pay a price on the exit. And out here on the exit of this turn nine, in sixth gear, um, and it's you can see the marks in the curbing, and that's just oh, that's just horrible to the cars. Uh, mechanics don't like that at all. So especially with Formula One cars, you're damaging bits underneath the car if you use those curbs. It's, it's not a good idea. And if you saw the earlier sessions today, there was a Toro Rosso with so much of its parts just flew off it uh, from striking the curbs. Does anyone else have some some questions for the great Mike Reedy? Uh, it's a chance in a lifetime, quite frankly, one of the best driver trainers on earth. I'm not just saying that's a comedic effect, he is actually bloody good. Uh, but if you, of course, do have some questions, please feel free to put your hands up. Now, Reedy, we just passed another sign that says DRS. Yes. Now, I'm pretty sure that stands for Drag Induction System, is that correct? Yes, or DERS, if you just want to do it that way. DERS, DERS, yeah. 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 And so that's activated there, so we've got two points, it's on this section, and then past the pits. Have, have you ever actually heard a driver on the radio call it DERS? Like, I've got a problem with my DERS? <laughs> I, I, I talk to Arjun in the same day, so Arjun says DERS. I can't wait for a round where you have poor radio reception, mate. They're going to have a laugh when you're on the radio. <laughs> We're waving to more people over in the paddock club. More AV people, fantastic. This corner is deceptive, such a late apex. And what you is that post, you see that post, it's really at the very first part of the corner, you can see. So it actually pulls you into thinking I'm gonna turn in earlier. It's where you actually need to turn in so late. It's almost full off. It's deceptively tight. And you, sorry. This, sorry, this section here, very technical and you hear people talking about, um, uh, you know, the last sector, I just didn't get my act together. It's normally in a qualifying type situation, it's when the tyres have degraded and uh, they don't quite make the, the finish their lap off. And so the good guys, they save the tyres for the first two sectors so they can really nail this last sector. Yep. And this is, this, is a tricky, this is a tricky technical sector here. This is what we call a double apex corner, particularly in horses which I drove. You just make, basically make one apex at the start, you let it run wide, and then you bring it back nice and tidy so you get a nice straight shot onto this corner here, because it's quite hard to break for. And what you'll notice here on the right-hand side, ladies and gentlemen, and we just waved to the other truck. Sorry, we didn't, give, we didn't get enough guests for you. I'm sorry, Vic. Forgive me. <laughs> um, if you just look on the right-hand side here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see an enormous sausage curb. So you can oh, wow. imagine if a Formula One car hits that, it's going to go flying. So really, obviously, we're going to avoid Moto that. GP, then. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the Moto GP turn. You can yeah. see people have hit the, the sausage there, a yeah. uh, bit of rubber there. It's all about just getting yourself realigned for this last chicane. Can I just interrupt, Reddy? We seem to have a bit of a race on our hands here. We've got another truck that's just overtaken us. If a driver did that and tried to uh, claim that as their qualifying lap, do you think they'd get away with it? No. It's called exceeding track limits. <laughs> oh, just an idea, mate. I wasn't saying I was going to do it, of course. I'd never do something like that to claim a pole. Never. <laughs> and then on to this last turn. Now, Reedy, I always find this last turn, uh, it, it's interesting. It looks easy flat, but it's actually quite tricky. It's got a few bumps in there, particularly in the middle of the turn, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's very difficult in the sense that if the you always see the drivers who haven't quite the, got their tyres up the temperature on the start of a flying lap. They'll run very wide, and then that, that ruins that lap. So, yeah, it's so important because it starts your flying lap and then also finishes your flying lap. So, you don't want to mess this one up. Just gives that great run down the straight, uh, and then you can see we'll be into the DRS or the DERS activation zone. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we're coming towards the end, if anyone has any questions for either Reedy or I in terms of how to drive a lap here at 
out of circuit to Catalonia, or should we steal the Sauber girls who are right next to me who happen to just be part of a Formula One team, and we can ask them their thoughts on the weekend? Well, Catherine was uh, in Formula Three, so she knows all about Three it. as well. Oh, well, you're a wheel expert. So tell me, what's your favourite track on the calendar, and how does Spain rank against that? Um, I think Spielberg is one of the nicest also in the atmosphere I like, uh, but the surroundings is really, really nice landscape. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I said Spielberg, but uh, I think Barcelona is also really nice. The rain finally stopped, so I hope we have a really nice weekend. Fantastic. I like, I like Spielberg as well. They're Christmas trees there. Are brilliant. <laughs> They're forests. They're amazing. And obviously, here you go, guys. This is where everyone grids up. Now, Sebastian Nuno caused a little bit of a contro controversy in China where he lined up outside his grid box. So now the drivers must line up in those white boxes. If you don't, then you get obviously a bit of a penalty. But uh, we're coming just to the finish line. In fact, I'm not even. So I think this truck driver might be thinking he's actually joining the race. He's actually going to join up on pole position. I don't know if anyone's told him that. I'm not actually sure who the driver is. Really, it's not one of your guys. But these are MotoGP. These are all MotoGP. Yeah, if it is, we're hang on. These are all MotoGP. We might have to hold on to it, everyone. Sorry. Yeah, that's exactly.